Hello and thank you for joining the second part of the JavaScript tutorial. Today we will be focusing on debugging and troubleshooting the JavaScript errors. We will look at a few examples to illustrate the methods used. The first step is to download and install the Firebug. Firebug is an extension to Mozilla Firefox web browser, which allows us to monitor and debug the JavaScript on any web page. Once we've downloaded and installed the Firebug, we need to make sure it is open and configured properly when the web application is loaded. In the Firebug window, click on the Console tab and activate the Break on All Errors button. Now we are ready to troubleshoot. Let's take a look at our first example where intentionally misspelled the name of the field used in defining the price variable on the JavaScript unload event. Since there is not a syntax error, the syntax check won't pick up on it, but the firebug should. One thing to note here is when you are troubleshooting and you build your project, you may want to uncheck the Compress JavaScript Files option on the Output step. This will organize the code in a way that is much easier to follow. So when the page that we are troubleshooting loads, the firebug will break on the error, indicating that CTRL price is an undefined variable. Then, if you look at the watch panel on the right, you will see that the CTRL price value is set to false, also suggesting that the variable has not been defined properly. All these indicators should give you enough information to go back to your code and correct the issue. Let's take a look at another example where we're calculating the value of the order on the fly and are not getting the anticipated result. We are calculating the order by multiplying the number of units in the order by the price of the unit and adding a text to the equation. So in the order where we have 5 boxes of tea at $20 each with 10% sales tax, our order should be $110. However, the total we are getting is $1000. So to troubleshoot the issue, we will insert a breakpoint in our JavaScript code and watch the values of each part of the equation separately to identify the error. We will separate the order subtotal and the text calculation into two separate expressions by adding them to the watch panel on the right. Once we reload the page and step through the code using the error controls, the expressions will be populated with the actual values and it won't be difficult to spot the error. Instead of adding the order subtotal and the text, we have been multiplying the two, resulting in the incorrect order total. A simple correction in equation logic will solve the issue. Let's look at another example where we are displaying and hiding a field on the page based on the value selected in another field. On the address form, we have a checkbox country. When checked, the drop-down state should also be visible. To insert the JavaScript validation logic for the state drop-down box, we need to know what the values for the checkbox are. Because there is a checkbox, it could be yes, no, true, false, zero, one, on, off, etc. So what we'll do is we will use the firebug to watch for the country field to get its value. Just like in the previous example, I will add the CTRL country variable to the watch panel, add the breakpoint and reload the page. The step-by-step -step debugging will tell me that the value for the CTRL country is on when checked. Now I can go back to my events editor and plug that value in the validation logic. So this concludes the second portion of the JavaScript API tutorial. We hope you have a better understanding of how to troubleshoot the JavaScript errors using Firebug.